My old manufacturing supervisor was a bookworm kind of guy that had a master's degree in mathematics, but no practical machining experience whatsoever. I'm sure some of you have had a similar kind of boss, the kind of guy that is good with spreadsheets and PowerPoints, but doesn't actually know how to make anything. One day he called us all into the conference room, which was weird because normally we would just hold our meetings out on the shop floor. We had about five guys in the department at the time, and we all went into the room and we sat down, and our boss came in and he asked us if we had seen the new 3D printer. The machine he was referring to was a hobby FDM plastic printer that was around a thousand bucks. Did a pretty good job, but it was by no means an industrial 3D printer. So we all nod our heads yes that we had seen the new machine. He then passed around a couple plastic 3D printed parts and proceeded to say, engineering has been unhappy with how long it's taking you guys to make your parts, and if you guys don't speed it up, these 3D printers are going to replace you. With that one sentence, he instantly lost all credibility and respect from the entire team. To put into perspective how ridiculous his threat was, our department was responsible for making very precise R&D parts for our in-house assembly automation and clean room equipment. Some of the parts were made out of stainless steel or even heat-treated tool steel, so the idea that the work could be done with a hobby-level plastic 3D printer was one of the most insane things I've ever heard in my career. I was young at the time, but everyone else on the team had 20 years plus of experience, so I'm sure you guys can imagine how they felt when this guy that had zero machining experience told them a plastic printer was going to replace them and the skills that they spent their whole career building. Having no practical machine shop experience, our boss didn't understand that machinists are a different breed and we don't appreciate our skills being devalued the way that he just did. It takes a certain level of skill to take a raw piece of metal and machine it into a complex piece of art that hits every dimension, and he just couldn't comprehend that. We all knew he couldn't do what he threatened to do. Our boss's ignorance didn't change what's true, and the truth is that printer could never replace what we did in that department. After the meeting was over, we all went back to work, most of us furious about the slap in the face that we had just been given. Not only did we have to deal with an incompetent boss, but on top of that, we had an engineering team that also couldn't comprehend how long some of our parts took because they had no practical machining experience. We would get a part that had three or four operations in steel with tight tolerances and be expected to program it, set it up, run it, and inspect it all in a single day. For the next two weeks, every steel part that came through with tight tolerances, we would joke about how we should take it to our boss and have him print it out of PLA. At the end of the day, you can constantly try to perfect your craft and be as efficient as possible, and we should certainly be striving for that every day. But manufacturing parts of any kind takes time, and in some cases, extreme levels of precision. Trying to get someone with no experience to understand that isn't always easy. When the owner found out what happened, our boss was fired, and that company still has a full-blown R&D department. To this day, that was the worst display of leadership I have ever seen. I don't know of too many leadership success stories that involve disrespecting and threatening your workers as a form of motivation. If our boss at the time would have inspired us to push the limits of what's possible and given us the tools to be faster and more efficient, that would have been a message that would have resonated with a machinist and that would have been something I could have respected. There will be people that try to diminish what you do, but if you are solving problems and producing for your company, it won't matter because the results will speak for themselves, so don't let anyone tell you otherwise. The ironic part about this story is now my job is to run a variety of different 3D printers, and we have some incredible printers that can make some insane parts that go far beyond what a hobby printer can do, and I would never make the claim that they can replace what a machinist can do. Additive manufacturing is best used to enhance subtractive manufacturing, and we need to be inspiring people to utilize all the tools at their disposal, not threatening them that they will be replaced by technological advancements. Thanks for watching. If you guys want to learn more about machining, visit the Titans of CNC Academy. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.